Welcome back to the video tutorial series on developing with Pyrel. In this tutorial, we'll have a look at some best practices for writing pilots. Let's start by looking at our pilot that we created in one of the first tutorials. Let's start the debugging for it. Now in the browser, this yields the familiar picture. Let's first have a look at how our pilot is currently structured. You may want to couple some of the props that are coming from the application shell. Now in this case, for instance, we want to say that the page actually has the page component props. And since we already know it's in our connector, and some data. Now, this is not a good practice, even though it would allow you direct access, of course, from TypeScript's perspective to things like history, location, etc. It also brings the Pyrel API. But this is just for convenience. Don't do or use this in production code. Instead, our recommendation is that if you need something from the Pyrel API, let's say you want to have an extension that you pass it on differently. So let's say your original code looked a little bit like this. You had a Pyrel extension and you said the name was foo. Yeah, very creative name, nevertheless. All right, let's save this. Let's have a look in the browser. All right, there's our fake data. Let's just make the timeout a little bit smaller. Instead of full, let's write bar. Here we are. It's all working as expected. Now, let's bring in the extension. We wanted to call it foo, and as a component, we just say, I am the foo extension. Great. Now doing that again, we see that the extension actually landed on the page. Wonderful. But still we are coupling Pyrel directly in here. Instead, we recommend that you write your interface explicitly. So let's place the data in here. And now the easiest way would be to mention Pyrel, but this wouldn't gain you much because now again, you have some import, type import directly from your application shell. You should avoid this. At the end, what you write is here something that's really independent of the application shell. The only dependencies to the application shell should be in the index TSX and maybe in some other helper modules that do not carry any components. So now how can we resolve the situation? Let's just say we want to have a foo react component type. That way we can just import foo and we would be done. Now the problem with this, of course, is that the signature looks different from the perspective of our index TSX. That's why we get an error here. But don't worry, we can actually handle that quite well. All we need to do is have the page mentioned here explicitly. Now we need here two props. We need the data prop, that's the data. And we need the foo. So what we can do is we can just destructure and get the data out here and for the foo. So that way we can insert the foo component and we have it decoupled. Very nice. The good thing is that this page component here is now really reusable and we could use it later in some other projects too because we are actually free to 
to give it whatever component we want to. So by following best practices, we are not only improving our React code, but we are also decoupling from Pyrel. Now the next thing is that these extensions are not so easy to test. Let's say we have another extension that we offer. And this extension that we are offering is called bar. And we want to see it on the screen. So what can we do here? As you see, there is no bar component here. Well, the easiest way would be to just check if we are in development mode. And if we are, we could, for instance, register a tile or something else that already shows the extension. And maybe we want to make the rows and the columns quite wide in this case. The important part here is that we just couple it in the development mode. So whenever I would publish this thing, we wouldn't see our large um, tile here. Actually, this whole code would not be in there. We already went into the topic of bundle splitting and our recommendation is to use bundle splitting for every component that is not directly rendered. So this means that if your extensions here would actually be larger, you would also have them in a dedicated module. So let's say we have a module called foo extension. And we would do the same here and this way we can ensure that we carry the least amount of baggage in our whole um, code that is initially loaded. And this is quite important actually. Because we don't want to have very large pilot root modules. They should be quite small and should only bring what is directly needed. All right, so the full extension is in here. It's lazy loading. And um, we can also see this if we want to. Just activate the debugging tools in the browser, we reload. And if we go click here, we see that not only was the page lazy loaded, but also the extension. And that's a great way of dealing with this. This concludes our tutorial on best practices. In the next part, we'll see how we can actually get our work done more efficiently.